Hello, scouts. It's Mr. Kugler, and we're we're cooking with the Dutch oven today. And I'm I'm a little excited, as you could tell, because I finally have the opportunity to do one of my go-to. We all come up with our go-to recipes that I love using, and it comes out of it's called Hill Country coffee cake and it comes out of one of john ragsdale's books john has uh, several books out there and this one's just on general outdoor cooking and then he has several that are on uh, dutch oven cooking uh, he seems to have the same passion that you know i do for dutch oven cooking and it comes out of that book uh, actually it's in two of his cookbooks uh, that he lists this recipe and what i love about it is the simplicity of it with that said, it does involve a little advanced preparation to kind of cut down on uh, the preparation out in the field. And what I did last night is I put together this packet with, or actually two packets um, of ingredients. Uh, this smaller packet here is a topping uh, that I'm gonna put on uh, once I get the batter in the pot. And this major bag or larger bag here is has the primary ingredients and it's two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour a half a teaspoon of salt a tablespoon of cinnamon a teaspoon of baking powder a cup of brown sugar a half a cup of oil which i'm going to add one egg that i'm going to add and a cup of milk that i'm going to add and one of the things that's important that you do is on the front of the bag here using a sharpie i wrote down what to add i also wrote down what was in the bag so if i'm on a longer trip and i i want to keep track of what's in the bag uh what package because i could have two or three different uh packages of uh, pre-prepared ingredients ready to go and i purposely did this and left the ingredients so that they're visible uh uh, so you can see the, the contrast between them. But before we get going, I'm going to mix those up in the bag as well as the topping. What I'm going to do a little differently on this is, because we're, we're camping um, and I want to cut down on my cleanup, is I'm actually going to mix the entire cake, coffee cake, in this good quality freezer zip Ziploc bag. Uh, so we'll get going preparing that. Um, we're going to use my red wagon today as my Dutch oven table. Uh, you saw that I had a previous video where I had my cook box, this cook box rides in that. And I mentioned the fact that I can use this as a Dutch oven table. Now don't go run and get your younger siblings brand new red wagon and ruin the paint job on it. Truth be known, this wagon here was headed to the landfill and I rescued it uh, from a friend whose kids had long since passed uh, the age of using a red wagon. And um, I use it as a Dutch oven table uh, and it holds up remarkably well. So we'll, we'll do that in a second. Uh, but uh, let's take a quick break. I'm gonna clear off my table here and we'll start preparing our Hill Country coffee cake. So as I get ready to start preparing my cake batter, one of the important things to do is I started my charcoal chimney going so that I have coals ready. And what I'm going to want to do is, in advance of starting to mix this together, I want to put on my Dutch oven gloves and go and add some charcoal to the top and bottom of my Dutch oven so that it's preheated and we're ready to go. So I'm going to start at the top with some briquettes here. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, the checkerboard method and this is a 12 inch dutch oven so i'm going to use the rule of thumb where i'm going to take the diameter of 12 add two so 14 briquettes i'm going to want on the top i'm going to take the diameter because i want less heat on the bottom and subtract two from the 12 or 10 briquettes on the bottom so let's see how well i did here counting out my charcoal so I've got my 14 coals here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do the checkerboard pattern. And this does a more evenly spread of the heat by moving the briquettes more in a checkerboard pattern um, than the ring method that I you see me using a lot. So this throws a little heat in the middle uh, versus just on that outer edge. So we've got that there. Now let's go put our 10 coals underneath. My Dutch oven is cool, so I can put it on the ground. And 
and I'll do the same thing on the bottom. Make a nice checkerboard pattern where I'm spreading these out. Now I'm gonna take and put my Dutch oven back on the heat. And we'll give that a chance to preheat while we mix up our batter uh, for our Hill Country coffee cake. What I'm gonna do before I put my egg in is I'm gonna mix up those ingredients. I remember the salt and the baking powder. We wanna get that fully incorporated. The other thing is the brown sugar has molasses that's been added to it to make it brown sugar. And sometimes that can have some clumps. Uh, so I wanna make sure that that's broken down in here. Um, so while I'm doing it, I'm gonna do the same thing with my topping as my egg wants to go for a roll. And this topping is simply, this is a half a cup of all-purpose flour and a half a cup of brown sugar. And I'm just going to do the same thing where I'm going to mix this together. You can mix and match. I consider it, I have a blueberry buckle recipe that has a similar type topping but involves a little bit of butter. Uh, but for simplicity today, I just went with the recommendation in the cookbook and just used the brown sugar and the flour. So... I'm going to start with my Ziploc bag here, and I am going to add my oil. One of the reasons why I wanted to do that was so I had a place to put my eggshell when I was done. I'm going to add my one egg. Eggshell there. And then what I did is I used my Nalgene bottle, and I knew I needed... A cup of milk and I pre-measured it out so if you were camping and you only needed milk for one thing you could pre-measure out that milk so with my milk added my eggs added I'm gonna close this up I'm gonna leave a little bit of room in there but not a lot remember this is a good quality Ziploc bag a freezer bag and that gives me some sense of confidence that it's going to be in one piece when we're done. What I'm going to do is try to get my ingredients to the bottom of the bag now that I've got it fully incorporated. Let's go over to our Dutch oven and we will coat the inside so that our coffee cake doesn't stick. So I've got a lid stand here or trivet, some people call them. I'm going to put that down on the ground. Take my lid lifter. This is a Mar lid lifter. Give it a little twist there and I'm going to put this down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, this is just canola oil. And I'm going to spray the bottom and up the sides a little bit because what I want to do is prevent that batter from sticking there. So now with our Dutch oven sprayed down with the canola oil, I'm going to add our cake mix. Now the trick here is I could open the bag and I could pull it right out of the top, but that kind of makes a mess because I'm going around the Ziploc. Instead, what I'm going to do, or attempt to do, is before I go to the pot, I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut off the corner of the bag. And now I'm going to come in over my pot and start dumping my batter right into my Dutch oven. I'm going to try to go and move it around. It's important that you have your Dutch oven level because otherwise your batter is going to be thicker on, or deeper in one corner and not as deep in the other and you can get some uneven baking. You'll have one area that's burnt and the other area that is raw or uncooked. 
Now I had a spatula, a rubber spatula, you could use a spoon. I had it handy in the event that it poured into the Dutch oven unevenly, um, but that went in pretty well. It's a relatively wet mix, uh, so it leveled itself out nicely. Now I'm gonna put my Dutch oven lid back on using this lid lifter, Namar lid lifter that clamps down. And when I put it down, I could give it a slight twist to make sure, spin, to make sure that the Dutch oven lid is seat, seated properly. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bail of the Dutch oven and I'm gonna lift up and I'm gonna spin the Dutch oven about a third of a turn the opposite rotation or opposite direction. And that will uh, help even out the heat on the bottom that may be different parts of the Dutch oven got a little hotter. So let's see how long this takes to bake. I'll do is I'll watch my coals to make sure I have enough. And although I'm gonna be close on this, I'm gonna add a couple extra briquettes in there just to make sure I have enough charcoal to be able to uh, cook and bake this all the way through. It's always difficult if you don't watch the amount of coals that you have ready to go and find out that you need more. Uh, it could really extend your baking time. As this bakes earlier on, I'm going to spin it and rotate the pot more frequently. Uh, with a batter like this, as I mentioned, you want to make sure your Dutch oven is level. In the event that my Dutch oven is slightly out of level, by rotating it more frequently early on, I'm going to help level that out and try to get a more even thickness of my cake as I bake it. But the goal, obviously, is initially to get it as level as you can. So I'm going to take the lid with the pressure slightly down on top of the lid. I don't want to lift it because if I lift the lid at all, I'm going to end up losing some of that heat that I'm counting on to bake my coffee cake. So I'm just going to push down, go a third of a turn uh, in, from my direction clockwise, lift up on the bale, and go a third of the turn the opposite direction, making sure that it's not sitting on any uh, charcoal briquettes. Uh, as I get later on in the baking process, I can go every 10 minutes or so uh, with that rotation. I will also watch my heat uh, by checking the uh, amount of heat that's being, uh, I could feel uh, with the glove off. Uh, it's a good method early on is to check your temperature and see what you have. Uh, and then watch and add more coals as you need to by looking at the volume of the coals. Um, I know we did a specific count. Uh, but we'll be able to look and as those coals start burning down you'll get a feel for it and you can add some more coals we'll back off on the bottom heat as we go through and if and don't replenish that as much uh, because we run the risk where that cake is directly in contact with the cast iron on the bottom uh, risking burning it so scouts one of the things that you always have to be mindful of is making sure you remember all the steps one of the things that i do is everything i need i put out and uh, you may have caught the fact that I forgot to put the uh, topping on it. So I'm just a couple minutes into baking here and I gotta go add this topping. Remove my Dutch oven lid and I'm gonna sprinkle this on top now. And I'm not gonna use the whole amount. I used about half of that and we'll put this Dutch oven lid on and we'll let this bake. Well, Scouts, we're a half an hour in and I just checked it. And let me tell you, when I cracked open that lid and that smell of that cinnamon wafted up, I knew we were close to perfection and we were close to done. So let's take a look at this. And, oh, one of the key things to look for is that the uh let's see if we can is that it starts pulling away from the sides and the other thing that we can do is take a paring knife or a toothpick and push it in and see if it comes out clean if you're worried that maybe you don't have it right take and move the knife side to side a little bit peek down in there and you'll see if it's done or not um, with a cake it's a little more dense check the middle check different parts just to make sure you got it fully cooked. So I'm excited because I get to eat some of this today and I'm sorry that I can't share 
But here's a coffee cake recipe. Granted, probably doesn't match up with the my plate requirements uh, with all the sugar that's in this, but everything in moderation. I mixed it up in that Ziploc bag, made things easy. We baked it in this Dutch oven for barely a half an hour uh, because it's not that deep of a coffee cake. I put a little of that topping on, it really adds to the effect. You could add some powdered sugar on the top if you want, or you could have added some uh, chopped pecans or walnuts to it. Um, we used the uh, checkerboard method of uh, Kohl's placement on it, uh, where we did the two, add di the diameter and add two to it. So we put 14 on top and we took the diameter of 12 for this Dutch oven, subtracted two and put 10 underneath and spread them. We spun it every five or 10 minutes throughout the baking process. And we have a great breakfast uh, supplement to go along with our breakfast or maybe a treat at night. Get out there, have some fun with your patrol and your troop. Explore different recipes. Look at different ways to cook with your Dutch oven. Consider using that old red wagon that nobody wants anymore as your Dutch oven table. And have a blast and expand your cooking experience and your cooking methods.